Amsterdam in three words. Ooh. Entrepreneurial. Vibrant. Energizing. Get things done. The gateway to Europe. Open-minded. In your face. Cozy. Gezellig is actually the word. For me, Amsterdam in three words is talent. Uh, it's about inclusivity. Cool and progressive. Global, a global city. Well connected. And we still think we can rule the world. For many, the Netherlands cultural capital immediately conjures images of misspent youths and stag parties. But with the likes of Netflix, Uber and Tesla choosing the city as their European base, it's increasingly hard to ignore as a serious global tech hub. Amsterdam is built on commerce, peaking in the Dutch golden age when the world's first stock exchange opened and the port was one of the busiest on earth. Leap forward 400 years and its small population is tech savvy, multilingual and open for business, as much as anything else. So what is it, apart from sex, drugs and big dance festivals, that is making Amsterdam one of the world's tech cities to watch? Who better to start my journey with than Nelly Kroos, former EU Digital Commissioner, now head of the Netherlands startup Delta. The Dutch government, the Prime Minister and the Minister of Economic Affairs and the startups themselves were asking me to be their special envoy for the startup scene in the Netherlands. It is, by the way, the startup sector that is creating the jobs for 41% at the moment in the Netherlands. It is a very international country and a very international area around Amsterdam. When you are walking in the street, every language could be heard. It's just fascinating. Today, the startup ecosystem looks like wherever in the world you see those startup ecosystems, which is um, young entrepreneurs that want to you know, start a business and want to grow and scale that into the world where they are deeply connected with investors, uh, with uh, incubators, with um, uh, universities. So it's a bit similar. So when you're here in Amsterdam at the tech clusters, you, you see a bit of London, you see a bit of Silicon Valley and New York. Uh, you can scale pretty fast. However, the Dutch market is not large enough to really you know, use it as a growth market. So you should, should see Amsterdam as somehow a test bed uh, and then a launch pad into Europe. Silicon Valley, I think why it's successful is because you have a, a good environment for investment, for risk taking, and it's stimulated and there's an infrastructure to do it. Here, what you have is some similarities, but you also have a place that people want to live in. So it is a magnet for people to come in and now the rest of the infrastructure is actually building as this is shaping up right now. So I feel uh, that the investment climate is it's nowhere near Silicon Valley today. I think we see a lot of signs that it's improving, that it's increasing, that there's more risk taking, there's more possibilities for startups and for anybody else. So it might not be Silicon Valley. Frankly, neither is London, Berlin or Paris. But that's not to say Amsterdam hasn't created some huge global tech brands. And along with acting as a European base for many US tech giants, it's also attracting UK startups to its shores too. I caught up with two of the Netherlands unicorns, Adyen and Booking.com, as well as the UK's Blipper, which made an acquisition here last year to find out just how easy it is to create success in Amsterdam. There's quite a bit of uh, companies that want to fund you here in Amsterdam. In the beginning, we raced with Network, and then we did a round with uh, Danny Reimers Fund uh, Index, and they're based in London. Uh, at the time, uh, only based in London, now they also opened up something in, in, in the Valley. We have 12 offices, so we uh, recruit in 12 offices. Our core development is based in Amsterdam. And that works very well for us, because here we have uh, a loyal group of employees, uh, booking, uh, which was started here. Also, not many people realize it because it was acquired by Priceline. Uh, but it is a Dutch company in its origin. It still is based here in Amsterdam. Uh, we have TomTom. So there has, there's quite a, a number of examples of very successful company. And now you have Elasticsearch. Uh, we have more than, than we think we have, but we are very, very modest about it. Uh, we never really considered moving out of Amsterdam because uh, we had access to uh, great talent and um, being in a metropolitan global city uh, kind of works for us because it's, it, 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 uh, we're close to our customers, we're cl close to our hotel partners and uh, from a regulatory uh, perspective and, and tax perspective 
the Netherlands is a very uh, advantageous because we have tax treaties with everybody in, almost in the world. It's very relatively easy to get tech talent here. Uh, so we always said as long as we can get access to really strong talented people, we'll stay in Amsterdam and so far we've been quite successful at that. There was another company in Amsterdam that was founded in Amsterdam, Layer, uh, also a augmented reality company. Basically, Layer and Blippa were competitors. They were actually in the same market. Layer was focused a little bit more on the platform and the technology. Um, uh, Blippa uh, was focused uh, more on the, on the big brands and the marketing campaigns. And Blippa acquired Layer uh, as a means to first expand their technology portfolio, so to have more uh, knowledge and more technology in-house, but also to start uh, growing into the European market, into the continent. Uh, Amsterdam is very attractive to uh, foreigners to come. We have uh, the possibility here in Holland with a knowledge migrant rule uh, that allows you to actually bring talent from outside of the EU um, if it's a scarce resource. So for example, IT talent is very scarce in the entire European Union, so we can very easily get visa for people from all over the world to come here. At this moment about 10,000 people a year come through the expat center. This is mostly non-EU, highly skilled migrants coming from the US, India, China, Russia, Brazil, uh, and uh, about a third of, those, of that 10,000 is coming from within EU countries. Uh, UK is uh, UK, Germany are the largest. So setting up a business in the Netherlands or putting in place a company in the Netherlands is quite easy. So there's no um, massive capital requirements. Uh, corporate governance structure is quite flexible and simple, so you can easily tailor the group structure to your needs. Um, Startup Delta, we have of course the Euro Commissioner Nelly Kloos, who has recently um, come to the Netherlands to really um, build a platform for all those yeah. people involved. I think what Nelly is doing with Startup Delta is great and uh, very necessary because she is bringing in the, uh, uh, the politicians and that has been lacking so um, it, that is a very important initiative and should have been there earlier. So it might be modesty more than anything that has meant the startup Amsterdam story hasn't quite got out in the same way that London's has in the past five years. But with Nelly Cruz at the helm of the Netherlands equivalent of Tech City UK, and with a regional approach linking all major cities right from its launch in 2015, it seems like the Netherlands is about to start making more noise. So what is it apart from tax, regulations and talent that is increasingly attracting people and companies from all over the world to this city? The yeah, Amsterdam is not so expensive. Uh, we think it's expensive. You're from London. Uh, London is expensive. What we see is that most of the people that come here for two or three years actually end up staying much longer because we have an amazing quality of life. Uh, have six or seven meetings within a day just by biking through the town. The bicycle rides in, uh, of, in themselves are um, joyous, adventurous. I think a large part also has to do with what we call the cultural infrastructure. The, the amazing number of museums, theatres, uh, the, the, the underground activities, the dance scene, you see that that makes life extremely attractive to people. The Netherlands is famous for their tulips. But if you look at the parameters for growing a tulip, then the Netherlands is the worst place in the world to grow tulips. It's too windy, it's too wet, uh, the, the soil is too um, sandy, so it's too cold, there's not enough sun. Worst place in the world. But because of these limitations, we became really good at it. And sometimes I look at startups and I feel like maybe that says something about startups here. You know, it's, it's not easy to start a company here. But the ones that do are really good at what they do.